welcome to Sunshine for Your Life. You know, as we progress in the study of the Second Coming, you hear a lot of talk about what's called the Temple Mount and also New and Old Jerusalem. So I thought today I'd start off and I'd describe to you what the Temple Mount really is when they talk about that. You have to remember first that there's two Jerusalems. One is behind the other. You have the old city of Jerusalem and you have the new city of Jerusalem. The new city of Jerusalem is a massive giant city like any other city. But beside it or in front of it, however you want to look at it, is the old city of Jerusalem, which contains the Temple Mount, some of the old temple, some of the religious uh, buildings and so forth, and that's really what we want to get into first of all today. So I'm going to show you this poster, the larger poster. This is the city of Jerusalem. It's a very nice looking uh, photo. I actually got that when I went to Jerusalem. You can't get that around here. And so uh, this is the city of Jerusalem, and I'm going to focus on the part that's toward the middle. So we'll bring the part toward the middle. That's the most important part. I wanted you to see the whole thing, but this is great. This is, whoops, just back up a little bit so I can get the silver dome. But this, okay, yeah, that's perfect right there. Now in the middle of this, you see a building with a gold dome. That is the Dome of the Rock. It's also called the Mosque of Omar, and it's located right on the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount is that area in the front, where uh, in the front of the picture, where there are several buildings, and it's a center of worship for Islam and people of that of that uh, persuasion. And if you look at this, uh, the little silver. If you look to the left, there's a little silver dome. That little silver dome is El Aqsa Mosque. Now, the Dome of the Rock or the Mosque of Omar is for dignitaries. It's an Islamic worship center and it's for dignitaries. The little white dome on the left, that's El Aqsa Mosque, and this is for the common uh, person. This is for everybody else. It's not for dignitaries. Now, I've been in both of those buildings, and I've been in the building on the right, which is the Mosque of Omar, the, t the uh, Dome of the Rock. That whole building is built around a rock. And there's a huge rock in the center of the building, and the building is around the rock. It's been built around the rock with the dome on top. And it is thought by some people that Muhammad went to heaven on a white horse, and he did so from that rock. This is like the center of Jerusalem. Now, there's just a very short distance between the rock of uh, the uh, mosque of Omar and El Aqsa. You just—it's like a straight shot. It, you cross a. a a street which doesn't you can't even see in this picture, but it's a very short walk. Why? Well, and you can go right into the Aqsa Mosque, but they're two there together. You'll notice that there is a wall in front. That wall is a is a wall around Old Jerusalem, and it goes around the whole city of Jerusalem. And in front, you see like little tiny trees. That's a graveyard. A lot of people want to be buried close to where the dome was. The reason is is that when judgment came, they wanted to be judged first. So at any rate, that's that area is a kind of like a, a, a kind of like a cemetery, and then. Toward the front of the picture, you see some trees and, and little, it looks like little houses, little yellowish kind of squares. This is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the Mount of Olives. This picture was taken from the Mount of Olives. You can see the Mount of Olives. Uh, you can go on the top of the Mount of Olives, which I have, and you look down on the city, and you see that little graveyard area, which is called the Valley of Kidron, and then you see that wall, which is a around the city, then you see the Dome of the Rock. And so that's basically what the Temple Mount is. There are some other buildings around there, outbuildings that are, are kind of connected with it, but the main thing would be that main building, which is made out of tiles and so forth, and with the gold dome. That's basically
basically what I want you to see. And you can see behind it all of the buildings. And you notice, of course, that those buildings have kind of a beigey look. The main construction uh, rock is the sandstone. And sandstone is kind of like a light beige. When I was there, and I don't know if the lava is still in effect or not, but there was a law that all of the new buildings in Jerusalem would have to be made of sandstone. It's a good building stone. It's cheap. There's a lot of it. And so therefore, they created a lot of buildings and a lot of homes that are made out of that kind of stone. So when you look at a photograph like this, you're actually seeing, uh, basically, you're seeing a beige looking uh, a photo. And the, the soil can be a little darker than that. But sandstone is basically the ma major stone. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of through with that picture. I just wanted to have you take a look at it. And I'm going to show you some pictures is here uh, that I'm going to try that give you a closer up look and explain what they are. It's, it's interesting to see what Jerusalem is really like. Jerusalem is a beautiful city. The whole country is a beautiful country. There's a lot of irrigation, so they have a lot of trees. They have a lot of fruit trees. If you go across the, uh, uh, the bridge between that and uh, Jordan, you'll see when you get into Jordan, everything is sparse looking. Everything is dry. Everything is looking like a desert. The whole area is like a desert anyway, but with irrigation, they have a lot of plants and a lot of trees and a lot of flowers. You know, when you get into uh, Israel itself, and it actually is a very beautiful city. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some other pictures to bring all of that more in focus. And we'll start off with this one right here. when we get that up. I'm just, just waiting for kind of a focus here. Then we'll have that up in a second. Now, this picture, this is the Dome of the Rock right here. Now, I know it's kind of shrunk up a little. And this here, around it, is like a cement area. That's the Temple Mount. And I just wanted to get you a, a, another little perspective on it. I'm going to be showing you more of these pictures as we go along. You can see the El Aska Mosque is right here. And all you have to do is walk from one to the other. And that's where it is. That whole area here is considered to be the Temple Mount. This is the area that everybody argues about. This is the area that everybody wants. Now, let's take a look at this picture right here. In this picture, this is the Dome of the Rock. I'm going to show you another close-up in the next, next picture up. This is the wall, part of the wall. It's sometimes called the Wailing Wall. The Wailing Wall is where tons of people go. You can see all these people scattered about. And they go and they pray there. And they're, a little, they're, they're like little bricks like. There are separations between the stones. And a lot of people have the habit of writing their prayer requests down and sticking the, the, they have little pieces of paper that you can use for that. And they stick these papers in between the stones of the wailing wall. And uh, it's, you see it's a beige wall. All the whole area looks like it's beige. This is more like an aerial view. You see a lot of visitors. Now what you don't see in this, there is a, there is a, a kind of like a, a fence that goes along right in the middle of this. And women go on one side of it and men go on the other side of it. And a lot of people say their prayers around by that wall, a lot of Jewish people particularly. And they're waiting, of course, for the Messiah to come, not realizing that he's been here. So let, that's one another picture. Now let me show you a close-up of the Dome of the Rock. It is a very, very, very beautiful building. All of those tiles and all and that gold dome, uh, it's very gorgeous and uh, the Arabic people love it. It's a holy place. This, this is also kind of attached to it. It's another important building, but this building you can go inside. Now I've been inside that building and it's built around a rock, as I said before. And the whole building is structured to be around the rock. When you go into the building, and by the way, you can't keep your shoes on. You have to go on in stocking feet. They won't allow any shoes 
shoes in there. So you take your shoes off and you go in and stocking feet. And this huge rock is right there. And there's a little walkway around the rock. And uh, you look and you can see the dome that's, uh, that's sticking up uh, from the middle of it. And there is a cord. You can, I've never really seen it in pictures, just a little bit of it. But there's a cord that goes from the top of that dome down toward the middle of the rock. Now, what that signifies, I have no idea. I've tried to find out. I've asked people. I've asked Jewish people. I've asked people who have studied it. And they don't know what it's for, but it's there. And it's a part of, where, uh, of their... Uh, uh, heritage, I guess. So here we are, and you can see it's a large, a very large building. You can see from the from the size, <coughs> excuse me, from the size of the people that are walking around. They seem like very small in comparison. So that's the Dome of the Rock, uh, uh, the uh, the Mosque of Omar. Very attractive building. Now I don't think it's going to stay up. I think it's going to come down. But I'll tell you about that in a bit. Here's another photo of it right here. See all of these buildings here? They're all beige looking. They're all made of sandstone. This is not, this is the, the second most holy place to people who are of the Islamic faith. And then <coughs> you can't see, you can't see the uh, uh, Aqsa Mosque from here, but this is the main building that is there. People come to see that. People come to worship there. Now, <clears throat> here's another picture. It's an aerial view of the same thing. This area, here's the Temple Mount. The Dome of the Rock, it's kind of like a circular shape, and all the buildings around it. This is the mount itself. And there are, there's a fence that goes around the building, and it has openings in it. Now, I'm going to show you a picture of the rock. <coughs> This is the rock. This is the dome. Oh, excuse me while I take a drink. It's a large rock. This is the dome. And the whole building is around the rock, as you can see. There's a walkway. You can't see the walkway, but you can see, you know, the structures around it to protect it. And they really do believe that, uh, that Muhammad went to heaven on a white horse from that rock. So that becomes a holy place for them. This place is holy to Christians because it's the center of where Jesus was born and where he lived and, how, and, and where he was raised. And for the Arabic people, it's holy. It's holy to a lot of different segments of society, but this is the inside of that building. Now downstairs, I've been downstairs in that building, and there's another room, and it's nothing. It's just a vacant room. But they do believe that the souls of the dead are stored in that room. So it's just vacant. You could go down there, walk around, you know, and of course there's nothing there. But they think the souls of all people who have died are housed somehow in that room. Now, I don't know if they mean just for their faith or whether they mean the souls of everybody everywhere located in that place. I'm assuming it's just for their faith, but I'm not sure about that. So that is that stone that the building is, uh, is built around. It's the center stone of the Dome of the Rock. This is just kind of an aside, but this is me. I went to the Dome of the Rock, and I made the mistake of wearing a sleeveless blouse. When you get there, you see your, your shoulders, they don't care if you're wearing short sleeves, but according to them, it's a holy place. So you have to have at least short sleeves. I had on a sleeveless blouse, so they made me wear this kind of an outfit, which they do sometimes. So it's an Arabic outfit. So I put it on. God knows how many people had worn it before me, but there it was. If I'd worn something with sleeves, if you see this uh, man here, he, uh, he has short sleeves. He He's fine. If I'd had short sleeves, I would have been fine. I didn't realize when I when I put on a sleeveless blouse that it would make the difference, but it did make the difference. So anyway, uh, my sister has a, a copy of that photo. Now here is a photo of uh, in the uh, Garden of Gethsemane. In the Garden of Gethsemane, 
there is an olive tree, and it's considered to be one of the oldest trees in the world, maybe the oldest tree, and it's a symbol of everlasting life. And the reason that, that it is is because technically this tree has never died. Since Jesus was born, since for 2,000 years, this tree has been alive. But the reason it's alive is that as various parts of the tree start to die a natural death, other shoots come forth. And when they come forth, they replace the, the ones that are dying. And so technically, it kind of recreates itself over and over again. So it's one of the oldest olive trees in Israel. Now, here's another uh, picture of the Garden of Gethsemane. For the Garden of Gethsemane, there is a beautiful church right here. That's called the Church of All Nations. And it's, uh, you can see, look at the flowers and the trees and so forth. A lot of irrigation has gone into uh, Israel, and they have beautiful flowers, beautiful landscapes, beautiful uh, uh, gardens and so forth. They raise all kinds of uh, flowers and so forth. They raise all kinds of fruit. As a matter of fact, they send fruit out as an export to Western European nations that can't grow it because their climate isn't just right. So they have a lot of exports of fruit. But this is called the Church of All Nations. It's called the Church of All Nations because various nations got together and contributed money for the building of this church because it was so significant. And if you take a close-up look, it's right by the Garden of Gethsemane. You can actually sit there by the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed. It's kind of blocked off, so you can't walk through it. But you can sit there by, uh, by the fencing and just look and see the Church of All Nations right there. It is a gorgeous place. Now, this is the shepherd's field. Oops, as soon as I get it up. This is the shepherd's field. Now, the shepherd's field is when Jesus was born, uh, the Bible said that there were uh, people tending their flocks, and angels visited them, and it was the shepherd's field and announced Jesus' birth. And this is one of the pictures that I have of the shepherd's field. It's really quite large, and it's got a lot of olive trees. This is another olive tree. There are sections of it that, that just, uh, uh, you know, just like a regular field, but it's also a very massive field. There's a, you can take some steps and go up to a store. There is a store there, but because that's not shown in this picture. And uh, this is an Arabic man, and he's as a sheep, sheep herder, and he's playing some kind of an instrument, and uh, these are the sheep that he's taking care of. So it's a chance for you to see that. Now, this is the Mount of Beatitudes. In the Bible, there's a story about how Jesus took his disciples and went to the mountain, and he taught them. And you have the Beatitudes, blessed are the sorrowful, for they will be comforted. You know, blessed are this person and that person for whatever it is that they're going through. And there's a series of about 20 of Beatitudes. Blessed be the sorrowful. Blessed be those who are in grief. Blessed be the believers. And this is where he gave that talk to his disciples. It was on the top of a mountain. Well, this is the top of the mountain right here. And it's a very gradual slope. And when you get down to the bottom of it, you're right at the edge of the Sea of Galilee. Galilee. It's right on the edge of the Sea of Galilee, and it's, it's very high, and there's a little tiny building up there. I don't even know if you can see that, but there's a little tiny building up there, and that's the place where he gave the Beatitudes, and a church has been built in that area. You can go into it. I've been in there, and you can go into it, and when you look off, you see the Sea of Galilee sitting right in front of you. It's a very, very gorgeous place. It's also a very high mountain. So that's something else for, for you to see. Now here we have Armageddon. Well, let me put this one up first. I mentioned about the Church of All Nations. This is the Church of All Nations. 
If you are in the, uh, in the area of the Garden of Gethsemane, you can look and see it. Remember, I showed you that little tiny picture of it. This is it. This is the whole church. And it's right by the uh, Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed. And his, a man is leading his camel. But this is the whole church. And you, it's very decorative. You can see a design on it. On the top of it, it's like it's got a picture on it that's been etched in. And it's a very gorgeous place. Now, I'll take that down. The Battle of Armageddon, I think I've shown this before, but the Battle of Armageddon is going to occur in this area. This is one of my own photographs. I made sure I got the tree branches because I wanted it to have a three-dimensional look. But it's a flat area. There are mountains all around it. It's wonderful for farming. There are a lot of farms in the area, and you can drive through it. It takes quite a while, but this is where the last battle is going to be. It's going to be in the, uh, in the uh, battle of Armageddon, which is in Megiddo, which is in a northern, fairly northern part of Israel. I've shown you that on a map, but I'll be doing that again. And this is the whole area of it right there. Now, this is a picture of the old city of Jerusalem, and the Dome of the Rock is right here. And you can see all of these beige-looking buildings all around it. But that's the Dome of the Rock. This is the city around it. And this area here, which is a little flatter, is known as the Temple Mount. You can stand there, and you can look off and see that you can see the Mount of Olives. And we have all done that. We just stand around and look at the Mount of Olives from the Dome of the Rock, because you can get fairly close to that. Now, I don't know if they let anybody in now, but when we were there, on the various times that I was there, we were always able to get into the Dome of the Rock. But I'm not sure that that's happening now. But you surely can get on the Temple Mount, and you just look off, and the, and, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Garden of Gethsemane is very close by, and the Mount of Olives is very close by. Now, this here is also the Garden of Gethsemane. Part of it's the Garden of Gethsemane. And lots of, of flowers, lots of plants. Uh, another church, there are the Church of St. Anne's is, far, is not far uh, away from that, but you can see what it is like. It's a very beautiful, beautiful spot. If you take and ever get to go on a trip to Israel, it's well worth it. Now there are not so many people traveling there because of problems with the Middle East. But this gives you a chance to see what's going on, uh, what, what it is like in Israel, and I know I've shown you pictures before, but I wanted you to see some of that, especially I wanted to mention what the Temple Mount is. So I'm going to close it off here, and uh, we'll go on with this next time. I want to talk about China, and I want to talk about uh, uh, <laughs> about uh, the things that are going on toward the middle of the tribulation. So we'll close it here. Please join me next time.